All right, welcome to Team 33, Raf Giallo here, and we're delighted to be joined by Martin Royser from the Ipswich team of the late 90s, early 2000s, uh, that played in the Premier League, finished fifth. Also, he was part of the Ajax team and squad that uh, enjoyed a lot of success in the mid-90s, also was capped by the Netherlands, and is now the Netherlands under-15 head coach. He's with me on the line at the moment, uh, straight from the Netherlands. Um, Martin, I guess to start off, um, you're in you're the head coach, as I said, of the Netherlands under under 15s and your coaching career started with um, you know coaching your son's team and then working with other teams but was it always an ambition to get into management and coaching uh, absolutely not <laughs> uh, I was uh, when I was a football player uh, I always uh, was in a fight with uh, the managers because I had a, I had a I had a big mouth yeah uh, already and uh, I was young and, and I thought uh, I knew everything best and of course, I was listening to uh, uh, to the manager what he was saying, but uh, but uh, yeah, sometimes you get fed up uh, by the words they always they always saying. So uh, uh, my first ambition was absolutely uh, not become a manager. But uh, when I stopped, uh, let's say ten years ago, I um, I first did um, absolutely uh, nothing. I did some uh, television work. But after a year or so, uh, I, I said to myself, okay, um, what I'm going to do now? Uh, my son was uh, six at that moment, so I started to uh, to give him uh, coaching lessons uh, in football. And uh, yeah, and, and after a while, I, I felt uh, I felt it was really nice to do um, to do something for the, the younger kids, and uh, and uh, it kick started uh, from there. Yeah, and here in Ireland, because I interviewed the Ireland under-15 head coach um, just in November, so it's yeah. kind of your uh, your contemporary, and uh, one of the things we talked about, and because we've, uh, we're, we've taken a few things from the Dutch system as well, because of how well it works, the idea yeah. of how important it is that winning isn't the most important thing at that age group, is that, some, is that part of your philosophy as well, as you coach these under-15s? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, first of all... Um Especially when you are young, but I think also when you are uh, a pro, a professional player, uh, having fun and and doing something uh, what you love to do every day. That's that's something you should try to achieve every day. Uh, so, uh, but if you are winning, it's it's also a, a success um, uh, feeling. So that's also. Uh, something strange that if you if you are developing players and you're doing that well that is uh is in line with winning as well so uh that those those two things winning and developing uh, kids that goes hand in hand in hand i think yeah and of course um stereotypically when we think of the dutch system we think about 433 three, and obviously passing movement technical ability um at that age um are you already kind of trying to instill formations or a certain type of style of game or is it more player individual player development well our our, our starting point uh when we are bringing up uh, little youngsters from the age of, uh, well, maybe they start here in Holland from the age of four or five, uh, we try to do everything with with the ball. Uh, so a lot of technical uh, uh, exercises. And then after the age of 15, 16, we we starting to develop uh, uh, the players within the system. So... From the age of five till the age of uh, maybe fourteen, fifteen, is only uh, doing exercises with the ball. So, um, yeah, so that's why the Dutch players in, in general are pretty skillful. Mm. And, of course, you came through that system as well many, many years yeah. ago um, at Ajax, one of the greatest schools in European and world football. And it was just at the start of a great era of success, the next era pretty much after the Cruyff, Naskins, etc. And we were lucky yeah. enough to speak to Johan Naskins on this show many years ago. But um, in terms of what you learnt um, in that Ajax system in the, early, in the late 80s, early 90s, especially as a hometown boy, what were the principles and are they much different to what you're kind of trying to instil now? Well, um, in, 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 the, in the last five or ten years, we, we, we've 
we haven't really dominated uh, internationally anymore. So we said uh, to ourselves here in Holland, okay, what have we done really good in the last 30 or 40 years or so? So let's try to keep that. Um, but uh, what have we lacking in the last uh, five or ten years or so? And that's uh, that's something we, we we've been looked at, uh, especially with the Dutch FA where where I work. And um, so, in general, we are uh, starting with the four three three system. Um, but uh, we've been changing a little bit that we are diverse in systems but also in the if you are playing in a certain uh, position you have the uh, the freedom to to go forward to to go left to go right but uh, the other players should uh, fill that hole up then in in that position so we we give the the players more freedom yeah, um, of course, uh, your time at Ajax, of course, it starts in and around 1993. I think your first league game was a uh, Der Klassiker against Feyenoord. That must have been a bit of a cauldron to start in. Yeah, well, I think a few days before that, I made my debut in the European Cup game against Besiktas. Yeah. Uh, so, but my officially uh, competition uh, debut was against Feyenoord, and it was in the, in the Olympic Stadium in Amsterdam, and uh, nowadays, they don't play the, uh, any games anymore. The, the games are all, 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 all the games are played in the in the Johan Cruyff uh, Arena. Um, yeah, that was special. I mean, and it's special. It was also a really long time ago. And I I, I, I read an article this morning about how. Uh, how less percentage uh, youngsters become a uh, professional football player, and I was lucky to become one, and and I was lucky to be a professional football player for uh, 18 years. So um, yeah, I was I was talented, but I was lucky as well to uh, to be in that small group of players who, uh, who became professional football players. And what a generation it was! We're talking about pe- people like Patrick Kluivert, Edgar yeah. Davids, Clarence Seedorf, Reisiger, the De Boer brothers, yeah. Van der Sar. Yeah. So it's great to be in and around that. And of course, leading the way, of course, was Louis Van Gaal. Um, as a, especially he was a young manager at the time as well. How did you find him um, in terms tactically, and I guess um, as a man manager as well? You mean Louis van Gaal? Yes, Louis van Gaal. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Louis van Gaal, he, he, was, uh, he was a football player who wasn't really the top, top football player. So he, he said to himself, OK, I, 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 I wasn't really uh, the top football player I maybe wanted to be, but uh, I'm going to be the best manager ever of Holland. And, and that uh, desire and that... Um, the 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 the, the, the yeah, how do you say the, the, the yeah the desire that the, he, he tried to work with us every day so he's he's demanding of of being a good football player he demanded that every day so um, so uh, talking about uh, tactically he was he was really good but talk to, to, talking about uh, the opponent uh, the strength about the opponent but also the way they played. He was really uh, uh, well be prepared. Um, so in in everything, uh, I never think I had a better manager than Louis van Gaal. Yeah. After that. Yeah, his system at the time it seems it was three four three, but the midfield is a diamond. So you as a midfielder, um, I was reading. I think generally you weren't you weren't meant to like overlap the wingers. So it seemed it's kind of all, almost a Cruyffian tactic as well. Wingers play kind of high up. There's a striker who can kind of move around, and then the midfielders who kind of run the game behind. Yeah. Well, let's say if 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 we are in ball possession, we are uh, we we went normally with. Uh, th- Three four three uh, with an extra midfield player, but uh, the extra midfield player was uh, was the, or the left centre half or the right centre half. Uh, so the the fullbacks were normally then in in holding position uh, defensively. But uh, looking at nowadays, uh, you see that the central defenders are nine out of ten times staying in the centre, but uh, especially. The wing backs uh, or the full backs, they uh, they they are bombing forwards all the time. So yeah. that's, that's that's changed a little bit uh, compared to the system we've played with uh, Louis van Gaal. 
Mm-hmm. And of course, that system led to the Champions League win in 1995. Your own kind of, I suppose, where you established yourself in the first team would have been the start of the 95, 96 season, scored a few goals, assists, and then the injury happens. So this is a collision, and I saw the video of it there recently with Wilfred Brookhouse. Um, yeah. it, you know, and I, I, the video is quite, in a way, it's just quite disturbing in a way because obviously we can hear your screams and everything else. At that moment, did you realize just how bad? It was. Obviously, it's a broken leg in the end. Mm. Yeah, well, I remember, I mean, this question has been asked uh, many times, of course. Uh, I remember that I couldn't uh, get any uh, uh, air to breathe anymore. I was like, uh, somebody's choking me, so uh, I was in that pain. Uh, but uh, within uh, a few minutes, they gave me mor- morphine. Uh, so they gave me a drug. So, so after that, I felt I felt uh, much better. <laughs> uh, and from then onwards, it was like more uh, being in the hospital for two weeks and then uh, working at my recovery again. And I think after eight months or so, uh, I was I was be able to play my first uh, game again. I think it was in the in the in the reserves. But anyway, I think. Uh, being a professional football player, that goes hand in hand with uh, injuries. And injuries are, if you are out of injuries, uh, uh, I mean, that's, that's something uh, that, that you are learning with your profession. Uh, that it's almost impossible to not to be injured in your career. So I was, I was unfortunate to have that injury, but I was fortunate that I could play on for, uh, I think, uh, almost uh, 17 years longer. Yeah, and of course he got capped with the Netherlands as well, which is obviously a great yep. achievement given the type of players that have been in that squad. And um, yep. it was a great era as well because you get capped. It's the it's a friendly against Ghana after the um, after the World Cup in '98, and this is a team that reached the semi final, penalty kicks away from a World Cup final. Euro 2000, yep. of course, under Rijkaard, again another penalty kick shootout <laughs> away from reaching a final. Um, I wonder what were the training sessions like because we're talking about some of the great players and even the likes of Burkamp who were playing for Ajax at the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I'm, I remember that that uh, when when you are uh, training uh, in the national team, uh, you you are uh, expecting a high, really high level, and it was unbelievable high level. But I have to say, when I when I was training uh, with the national team, I I, uh, I was leveling uh, that high expectations, and I and I felt really uh, confident that I was. Uh, gelling within uh, the qualities that uh, was demanding uh, at that time, so it gave me uh, a big confidence boost. But unfortunately, uh, I, I was only one time uh, national uh, national team player. But um, yeah, also it could have been more, it could have been none. Uh, um, but uh, I, I was lucky that I had. One one cap, uh, maybe it should have been more, but uh, I was happy that I uh, at least uh, had one cap. Yeah, and of course, um, as we talk about the Dutch system and Ajax and everything else, of course, we're talking a few hours after Ajax knocked Juventus out, having knocked out Real Madrid in the Champions League. A huge achievement, new young generation with De Ligt and Frankie de Jong and the likes. Yeah. When you look at them and then you look at your own era, the type of players that have come through, does it kind of bring back memories of what Ajax and the Dutch national team were kind of capable of at the time? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to uh, to have a new um, new group of players who are looking uh, as world class players. I mean, uh, you're just mentioning Matthijs de Ligt and uh, de Jong. De Jong is going to Barcelona, of course. Um, so they've been recognised not only in Holland but also uh, now in Europe. So um, the future looks bright again, and it looks just as bright as um, as in our area. And uh, we've been uh, lacking for uh, top talents for the last five or ten years. So hopefully in the next uh, ten years we can enjoy um, some some talented players again who are look uh, look also happy to play. And they uh, have still have a lot to prove, as in uh, winning medals, uh, winning Champions League, uh, winning the European final. So. Um, so hopefully it's been a great achievement for Ajax to uh, to reach the semi-finals. But it's been you know, it's, hopefully they're gonna even um, go further. Uh, I think they have the qualities. Uh, the, uh, so it also depends what 
Man City does against uh, Spurs tonight. Um, but I, I think they can reach the finals. Yeah, and 100%. Uh, you couldn't rule them out. I mean, they've shown so much spirit, uh, which is yeah. remarkable for what is a very young team. Um, I also wanted yeah. to touch on um, your time, obviously, with Ipswich, which uh, yeah. was a very memorable time, especially for uh, here in Ireland. We do follow the Premier League quite closely. <laughs> but they were in the um, what is now the Championship, is in the first division when you first arrived. So the person who scouted you, so it's Romeo Zondervan, right? And uh, yeah. yeah, you were at Vitesse at the time. Um, Do you, know, you know much about English football at the time? as he scouted you and then tried to bring you on board? Yeah, well, um, I, was a, I was a follower uh, of, of, of all uh, top leagues and uh, at the time uh, the Italian league and the Spanish league and English league was all, were already uh, the, the, the top the top level uh, uh, leagues in Europe. So, uh, But I was more uh, looking also German uh, Bundesliga um, and so, anyways, I was in a, in a, in a, in a quite a dead end position at Ajax. Romeo Zonderfan, he was a Dutch scout in Europe, and he saw me play. He knew me as a player, and uh, and at that time I was uh, the half year before I went to Ipswich. I was still a national team player of Holland, so um, um, he knew my qualities, and he, he they gave me a chance to uh, to go to Ipswich, and they said to me, listen, we need one more player and that player is you uh, who can bring us to the Premier League and um, and eventually after a three-month roller coaster uh, in the first division where we ended up uh, in, in at Wembley uh, in the playoff finals. Uh, luckily, uh, we were enough to uh, to get promoted and, uh, and yeah, and, and, and since then uh, I, I, I was at Ipswich for uh, four and a half years. Yeah, and of course you mentioned the playoff final against Barnsley. There, you score the last, uh, the fourth, the, the fourth goal in the four-two win. Um, is it true? Like the you said to the because you'd started on the bench. The Ipswich assistant manager Dale Roberts was sitting um, beside you. You turned around, I think, seven minutes towards the the ninety minutes, yeah. and you kind of go, "Look, bring me on. I'm going to score." Yeah. I was really disappointed that I wasn't playing from the start because um, at that time I was really uh, playing well and and I had uh, the urge to to get Ipswich to the to the Premier League and I. But I mean, it's a team effort and and so I was like, okay, being on on the bench and try to make an impact when I came on, uh, come on, uh, that was that was something uh, which was popping into my mind. But uh, to make an impact, you have to play. So I said to uh, Dale Roberts, uh, hey, listen, I feel really good. I think we are under pressure now. If you put me on, I score that goal. Uh, so and, and then he said to George Burley, OK, uh, Martin, uh, he, he's really keen to play. <laughs> and then he, he brought me on. And, and then uh, the rest was, was history. I scored the, the, the winning goal, brought us to the, to the Premier League. And everyone expected that Ipswich team not to stay up in that season, but yet you confounded yeah. expectations more than anything. To finish top five is amazing as a as a promoted club. Um, when the season started, did you feel that you had enough to actually st- not just stay up, but actually push on further, as you did? Mm, well, at forehand, we we our goal was to stay up, of course, and and and. Uh, and looking at our squad, it was a really uh, tight uh, squad. We were really uh, were like a little family, yeah. Like like we we really were working for each other uh, within that team, and and we felt at home at Ipswich. Uh, so, and I remember that they didn't bring in any, any new players. So we said to each other, okay, we have to do it uh, with the same squad we we had uh, the the year before. Um, uh, so we felt like, okay, come on, uh, we have to do it. So uh, let's go for it with with eighteen or twenty players, and and we we started uh, to lose uh, the first two games, I think, and 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 then we won, and then suddenly something starting to believe in, okay, we can we can stay up, but we we also know we are a good bunch of players. And that that ended up uh, at, at I think at the last the last game we we couldn't even achieve the Champions League I remember but uh, we lost uh, against Derby or Drew um, but we we made a great achievement to to reach the the European Cup. 
Yeah, of course, George Burley was manager at the time, but also someone I did want to bring up, given that he played for Ireland and was one of your teammates, and obviously his surname, Holland, Matt Holland, yeah. it's uh, yeah. very memorable for a Dutchman, I'd say. But as a captain and a leader, um, he he seemed to have captained every club he was at. Um, what was he like as a teammate and as a leader within that squad? Yeah, I mean, uh, he, was, he was really uh, on the pitch. He was like... Um, Giving the example in the, in work work ethic, so uh, he uh, he liked to run uh, a lot, and he like tried to help you. Uh, uh, he tried to uh, turn the things. Uh, what the manager said before the game, he tried to uh, to put that in the, in in the game within the game. So uh, in in work ethic, he was he was a good example of of being a good uh, good uh, captain. Yeah, um, one of the I suppose the, the the kind of weird things I guess finishing fifth the one season and then obviously not being able to survive the second season. Um, now there had been changes and unlike the previous summer, you know the likes of Finidi George comes in, Matteo Serini, so the squad has changed a bit. Um, was it down to just a lack of cohesion, or what do you think made the difference between that fifth place finish and then the relegation the second season? Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that um, uh, George Burley wanted to strengthen the squad uh, with any cost. Uh, so uh, he was he was really uh, needed to bring in two or three players. And I thought, uh, okay, if you if you are bringing in uh, new players, they 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 need to immediately uh, make an impact, and uh, that's that's what they didn't, um, which which was a shame. Um, so I thought, and I think we we could have done it without uh, um, uh, the the extra strength. But you never know uh, whether that's that's the truth because uh, that didn't ha- that didn't happen. So uh, um, the second year is always uh, diff- more difficult than the first year. I think um, the, the the opponents knew our our qualities more. So. At the end of the day, we are we were two points, I think, short of uh, safety, uh, which was a shame. Um, but I think we we could have done maybe uh, done it without uh, the, the 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 extra players who've been brought in in the beginning of the season. Yeah, and of course, um, if we fast forward to nowadays as well, obviously Ipswich have just been relegated at the weekend to the um, what is League One or so the old second division in that time. Um, do you still kind of follow the results? And were you kind of are you surprised that since Mick McCarthy left, uh, it's been su- there's been such a decline at Ipswich? Um, you know, I've been following them, of course, uh, by uh, the BBC, and, uh, and and sometimes I saw them play by uh, highlights on uh, on the internet, but. Um, in the last few years, you've been seeing they've been going had more difficulties to uh, to uh, to stay with that level and 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 to cope with um, with the other uh, uh, teams because uh, there are a lot of big big teams in the in the in the championship. So it's and they always want the, all the teams want to want to go straight up again uh, to the Premiership because there is a lot of money involved. Uh, so there, there are a lot of good players, but. So I, I, I've, to be honest, I've seen, I've, saw, I've seen it coming that, that that maybe they're going to be uh, relegated, and and unfortunately uh, last week they have been relegated, which which uh, hurts me, uh, of course, from the inside because it's a great club, Ipswich, a uh, great area, uh, great bunch of uh, uh, supporters, and 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 it's uh, it always. Hurts when you see your former clubs uh, or relegate or uh, not doing well. Yeah, and I suppose a final question before I let you go. Obviously, you're the Netherlands under 15 head coach, as we mentioned at the beginning. But in terms of your future in management, uh, do you see yourself maybe one day standing on the sideline at Ipswich, uh, leading them out, or is that kind of a pipe dream in the future? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, maybe uh, you never know. I mean, uh, it's going really well with my uh, management. Uh, 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 Career, I think um, my my first goal is to learn youngsters uh, how to become a professional football player, and that that, that gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction. Um, and I think with my UEFA A license, you're not entitled to um, 
to become a manager of Ipswich. So uh, I, maybe in the next few years, I try to get my uh, pro license, and from then onwards, everything uh, can happen. And and it's it's a big advantage that I know the the club. But my first uh, years will definitely be more in in the with the Dutch uh, country B uh, or uh, the FA. Uh, to work uh, with youngsters and, and try to bring in uh, just uh, top, top notch players as Matthijs de Ligt and uh, de Jong. Yeah, well, we'll wish you best of luck with that as well. It's always yeah. good to see good Dutch teams uh, coming through. They're always vibrant, yeah. play great, good football. And best of luck with your own career as well. Martin Royser, thanks a million for taking the time uh, to chat to us. Uh, very fascinating career. Thank you very much.